Well, hey friends and neighbors, this is Chuck out at Sheraton Park Farms. Welcome back to the farm. Um, one of the most common questions that we get is, how do I get started at a farmer's market? Um, and so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Um, we're going to talk about picking the markets that you want to go to, uh, getting ready to go to those markets, and stick around to the end. I'm going to give you the most important tip um, that you're going to need to think about whenever you're getting ready to go uh, sell at a farmer's market. So stick around with us for a little while and let's uh, let's talk about being a vendor at a farmer's market. So this is going to be a little bit of a talking head video so I'm going to try to overlay some footage from our farmer's markets in the past and also I'm going to show you some stuff on the screen here. But um, one of the most common questions that we get all the time is how do I get started at a farmer's market? And as we're moving into the new year, that's when this video is being recorded, and this information is good no matter what time of year it is. Um, as we're getting ready to move into the new year, lots of folks are thinking about their uh, sales outlets for the upcoming season and getting set up and selling at some different farmers markets. So let's talk a little bit about that and some ins and outs and some things that you might not have thought about. So the first question you need to ask yourself is, do you want to sell at a farmers market? And one of the things that you need to keep in mind that a lot of folks don't think about is that being a vendor at a farmer's market is a huge commitment. It takes a ton of time. Typically markets will run about half of the year, about 26 weeks per year. Around here ours typically will start towards the end of April and run through the end of October, so about six months. So you're looking at a 26 week commitment. And that is every, for us, it's every Saturday. Some markets will be on Tuesday night, Thursday afternoon, whatever the case may be. But these markets are weekly. And it's a huge commitment. Um, again, for us, they're on Saturdays. So you got to think about getting somebody to cover your chores for you, or you're going to have to get up early and do them super early or do them late in the evening whenever you get back. Farmers markets cuts into activities, um, vacation, and that kind of thing. Because, again, you've got to be there. One of the key successes, or one of the keys to success at a farmer's market is consistency and being there every week. Um, customers depend on you. Customers that may be doing their weekly grocery shopping depend on you to be there so that they can make their food, pur food purchases for the following week. So being consistent and always being at that market is key to being successful. And it takes time to build a following. Um, and that's where the consistency comes in. We started our first market in 2018, a little over three years ago now, um, and we started out with just a few jars of honey and some eggs. We were there every week. People learned that we were the honey and egg people. And so after we got that following built, we started adding additional products. We started adding our pastured poultry. We started adding our pastured pork. And it was real easy for folks that had been used to buying from us because we had been there every week to add on and, and make a new purchase of a new product. So consistency is the key, but it is a huge time commitment to be a vendor at a farmer's market. So the next thing you want to consider is what markets do I potentially want to sell at? What are some markets that we would like to you know get our farm uh, involved in and become a vendor at those particular markets? Well, one of the first things you can do is just go to Google and Google farmer's markets near me. And it's going to give you a list of potential farmers markets that are in your general area. Uh, you certainly can expand out the uh, the search parameters and how far you want to look. But for us, you know, we Google farmers markets near me, and we've got a good group of markets that are just you know pretty close to us. Once you pull that uh, list up, then go ahead and start um, snooping around some of those markets and checking them out. Um, for example, this is one that we attend. This is one. This is our primary market, the High Point Farmers Market. So we'll click on that. Goes over. Now we've got the the market web page. We can see that the vendor application is available, and we'll talk to a little bit talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. We've got the market manager's name and phone number here, so uh, we know who to reach out to. Again, we'll we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But this gives us a general idea of the market itself. Um, you also can uh, snoop around a little bit on Facebook. Uh, just uh, search for farmers markets near me again. And it'll pull up a list of potential markets um, that are within your general area. 
and you can start looking at those particular markets and kind of getting a feel for who they are, what uh, products they have, um, what vendors are already there, maybe what the foot traffic looks like. So do your research. Look at these markets on their social media pages, look at their web pages, and find out um, as much as you can about the particular market before you reach out to them. Something you want to think about is the, the uh, demographic and the neighborhood that a market may be in. For example, if you have a higher end product that has a little bit on the upper end of, a, upper end of the price scale, you might want to think about the neighborhood. Is it in a good neighborhood or is it an in an economically depressed area? And so match your product and what you're selling to the potential markets that you may want to be attending. Look at who else is selling at those markets. Are there folks there that have complementary products to what you're doing? Or is there a lot of competition there? <clears throat> if you're selling pastured poultry uh, and the market that you're looking at already has three or four pastured poultry vendors, uh, that may be something you want to think about and that might not be an area that you want to uh, dive into. The competition may be there in terms of the market is already kind of saturated and you may need to find a different place. So do your research on the potential markets you want to go to understand where they are, the demographics, the other vendors that are there, and would it be a good fit for you. So once you've decided on the potential markets that you want to go to, again, check out their, their web pages, their social media pages, and make sure that you understand everything you can about that market before you ever reach out. Um, review the rules. Make sure you understand the rules of those particular markets that you're interested in. Rules will vary a little bit from market to market, um, some markets may have rules that are very complex and very strict. Other, rule, other uh, markets may have rules that are not very complex and not very strict at all. So look at those rules and make sure you understand them and make sure that that's a, that's, those are terms that you can abide by and that you can follow those and you're not going to run afoul of the market manager or other vendors that are there. Um, contact the market manager. Reach out to the market manager. Let them know who you are what you're interested in, ask a few questions. Are you guys currently accepting uh, new market vendors? Um, and if so, are you accepting new market vendors for the product that you sell? Um, they may be looking for a new prepared food vendor, but they don't need another um, pastured poultry vendor because they've already got four guys that are selling pastured chicken. So reach out to that market manager, ask some questions, find out what's going on with the market, let them know who you are, and try to, again, determine if you're gonna be a good fit. Um, reach out to other vendors that are part of that market. Um, if you can see a list of the vendors on either the uh, market's webpage or on their social media page, maybe reach out to some of those vendors, ask some questions. Is it a good market for you? Do you have good foot traffic? Any issues that we need to be aware of? Um, and then generate a little goodwill as well. Um, you never know whenever you're gonna need help setting up a tent, breaking some uh, tent down, you need to step away from your from your booth for a minute. You need somebody to watch your stuff. So develop some relationships with those other market vendors uh, as well as the market manager. So once you've picked your market, you know this is where you want to go. You want to fill out the vendor application. Typically, these can be found online. If not, reach out to the market manager and have them send a, send a, uh, a copy of the application to you. Read through those applications and make sure that you uh, are filling them out completely. Um, Again, this is a, uh, an application uh, and a list of the rules for last year uh, from one of the markets that we attended. Um, talks a little bit about their um, kind of their mission, what they're trying to, uh, trying to accomplish, general rules overall, arrival times, parking, um, that kind of thing, arts and crafts, talking about uh, farmer and food artisan vendors, uh, and then your application is here. Uh, down at the bottom, make sure you fill this in completely. Uh, on this one, business name, primary contact information, email address. On some applications, you may also need to have your tax ID number, your EIN. Uh, you may need to have a copy of your meat handler's license. Another question we get real commonly is, what licenses or permits do I need? Um, the thing I would recommend is reach out to the market managers and find out what uh, permits or, or um, licenses they require and also reach out to your local agricultural extension agent. Um, lots of times those guys are a great resource to help you understand what licenses you need and they can help walk you through that process. They're typically there to help you and the guy that we've got here in our particular area 
um, super guy, very helpful, and has really helped us navigate some some tricky waters in the past. Um, also, you're going to want to go ahead and uh, probably make your payment uh, for the your vendor uh, vendor booth. Um, some markets will um, give you the opportunity to go ahead and pay for an entire season at a time with a little bit of a discounted rate. That's typically what we do. We know we're going to be at that market for a full year or for a full season, so we'll just go ahead and pay the fee up front. Um, some, vend uh, some markets will allow vendors to pay on a per week basis, maybe let you come in for a couple weeks, try it out, um, and they'll only charge you for the weeks that you're there. Um, the only issue that I have with that, again, is it's consistency, and this is a very relationship type of marketing, and you've got to be there consistently every week, letting folks know who you are, what you got for sale, answer questions, and building that relationship um, to be successful in the market. So finally, the, the biggest tip that I could give you on being successful at a farmer's market is start your marketing now. Don't wait until week number one of that farmer's market to begin letting people know who you are. If you don't have a web page, go ahead and get your web page set up. If you don't have any social media presence like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, whatever the case may be, go ahead and do that now before you ever get to the market. You need to have customers that know who you are, have heard about you, know your story, um, and know a little bit about you before you ever get there. Otherwise, you're just a stranger, you're just another vendor there that they, they don't know who you are, or what you got for sale, or anything. So go ahead and start your marketing now. Get your Facebook page up, go ahead and start posting you know, a couple times a week, some photos from your farm, a little bit about who you are, a little bit about how you're growing animals, or meats, or, or veggies, or whatever the case may be. Go ahead and start letting folks know who you are and what's going on. Um, for us, you know, we post co um, links to our um, our YouTube videos. We typically do a lot of pictures during uh, during the week. We try to post some of those, um, and just engage a community around who you are and what's going on. When you get to that market, you want customers coming and asking for your product in a pull fashion, as opposed to you having an overabundance of product and you're trying to push that product. So work to get folks excited about your farm, excited about what you're selling, and have them come ask for that product instead of you trying to push it out. Um, I would much rather have 10 people in front of me asking for chicken that I've sold out of than to have a cooler full of chicken and nobody around. So again, work on your marketing before you ever get to the first farmer's market. Something else that you can do, a couple things, Promote the market itself. If you look on our Facebook page, for example, um, there are a number of places where we are promoting uh, the market that we're attending. Um, that helps drive traffic to that market for other vendors. Um, it promotes the, the market overall. If folks are coming to the market, they're gonna come over and see you potentially. So promote the markets that you're gonna be attending on your social media pages, your website, whatever the case may be. That helps to let folks know where you're at. Um, it helps to get, again, get traffic to that market so that folks can buy. They're not gonna buy from you, they're not gonna buy from any other vendor if they're not there. So drive folks to that market. Also something that you can do is promote other vendors, um, particularly vendors that are selling complementary products. You may not wanna promote guys that are selling exactly what you are, um, but if there's a way that you can promote other vendors at those markets, that's gonna be beneficial to you, it's gonna be beneficial to those other vendors, and it's gonna help the community as a whole to have access to this local clean food that we're all trying to uh, we're all trying to produce. So what markets are you attending? Leave me a comment down below, let me know how many markets per week you're doing, uh, maybe what days you guys are doing markets on, and what products you're selling. Um, we typically do two markets on Saturday, uh, we were doing a market on Friday evenings this past year, so as we're getting into the new year, we're trying to decide what markets we're going to attend, but I'm interested to know what markets you guys are doing. Um, that's a few tips on getting, uh, getting set up to go to different uh, markets and be a vendor. Uh, I've got a few other video ideas that I'm thinking about, talking about market setup, uh, customer care, and some other things, so be on the lookout for those. We're going to try to build a series 
of being successful at a farmer's market, we're going to try to build a series of those videos out and uh, see what we can do with it. But anyway, um, I'm going to post a link to a <clears throat> video up here on one of our farmer's markets and how we did one week. Maybe that'll encourage you and inspire you. So check that out. Um, and also we'll do another video of some other type down here in the other corner. But anyway, appreciate y'all watching. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks.